Welcome to the Preparing AWS for Teradata Vantage episode of the Teradata Vantage for AWS How-To series. These series of episodes will walk you through the setup of Teradata Vantage for the AWS Public Cloud. Just to let you know, in October 2018 at Teradata's Analytics Universe Conference, the product known as the Teradata Database was rebranded with the Vantage name. You will see this new naming throughout these episodes and on the AWS Marketplace. However, you will also see references to Teradata Database as the name change filters through documentation and websites. Let's cover some basics. This is a technical video series and you are likely in a DBA, advanced developer, or consulting role. We expect that you are familiar with the AWS console and with AWS concepts in general. This episode will cover the details of preparing your AWS account to launch Teradata Vantage. Before you can complete the activities in this episode, you will need, obviously, an AWS account as well as an IAM user with appropriate permissions. That is, you will need permission to create or modify a VPC, subnet, and other similar elements. To get started setting up your AWS account, go ahead and log into the AWS console. This right now is a great time to check which region that you're in. We're going to be using the US East 2 region, which is Ohio. You can use any region as long as it's supported by Teradata Advantage. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is go to the VPC dashboard. So we can do that by coming here to the services menu, scrolling all the way down to networking and content delivery and selecting VPC. Now you can go ahead, you can use the default VPC, which will definitely work. You can use an existing VPC as long as it's set up correctly, or you can go ahead, follow along as we create a brand new VPC. So to create that VPC, let's go ahead and get started. We'll come over here on the left and we'll select your VPCs. We don't have any here, so let's go ahead and click Create VPC. First thing it's going to ask is for a name tag. So we're going to start kind of a convention here. We're going to say How To Series. That's what we're going to kind of call everything. And then we'll just call this a VPC. We have to give it an IP address block. So we're going to pick something kind of large, 10.1.0.0 slash 16. And then everything else we're going to leave as default. That's absolutely fine for us. Go ahead and click Create then click close to go ahead and acknowledge that. Once we've got our VPC, the next thing that we're gonna to need to do is go ahead and create a subnet. So on the left, go ahead, click subnets, click create subnet. And again, we need to go ahead, give that a name. So let's do how to series. And I'm gonna put this in the 2A availability zone. So to kind of recognize that, I'm gonna say 2A just on the end of that. I have to select the VPC it's attached to. So I'll go ahead and select that VPC. Uh, availability zone. I said we're going to use the two way just because I want to, so I'll select that. And then finally, I do need to select a network address that's within our VPC. So we'll do 10.1.5.0 slash 24. That looks pretty good. Now that I've got, let me go ahead and click close here to acknowledge. Now that I've got both a VPC and a subnet, I am going to make sure I need to get out to the internet because when the CloudFormation template runs, it's going to need to be able to contact the AWS infrastructure. To do that, it needs internet connectivity. So for that, I'm going to need an internet gateway. On the left, come over here, click internet gateway, and kind of following a pattern here, click create internet gateway. All I need is a tag, so we're going to call that how to series-igw for internet gateway, click create. Click close to acknowledge we have that, but it is not yet useful to us because it's not attached to our VPC. So with the gateway selected, come up here to the actions menu, click attach to VPC, go ahead and select our VPC, click attach, we're done. Or are we? Just because we've got an internet gateway, we actually don't have a route or a path out to that gateway. So let's go back to our subnet here, click on subnet and then come down here to our route table. And we'll see here, here's actually the route table. I click on that. And the reason I'm doing that is if I had multiple subnets, multiple route tables, that makes sure that I get to the right one. So this route table is going to define all of the paths that are available to my subnet. Down here, I'm gonna click on the routes tab and you can see that I've only got one route and that's gonna be for the local VPC. So I'm gonna click on edit routes. And then I'm going to click on add route. And I need to add a default route. And the default route is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. That's enough zeros for anybody. 
And then over here, we're gonna click on target and that's gonna to go to my internet gateway. So I'm gonna go ahead, select internet gateway, and then I will select the actual gateway, which is this one. And now I can click on save routes, click close to acknowledge. Okay, you would think at this point, I can now communicate with the internet. So close, not quite. We need to do one more thing. It's kind of an AWS thing. If any instance is in the subnet and wants to communicate with anything on the internet, it needs to have a public IP. So that goes back to the subnet. Go ahead and click on subnet. Make sure that your subnet is selected. Come over here to actions and then click on modify auto assign IP settings. You see by default, when an instance is created in a subnet, it grabs a private IP. So that's gonna be that 10.1.5, something after that but it needs to have a public IP. So what we're gonna do is we're going to check this box here. And so in addition to that private IP, it's gonna get a public IP. Now it can communicate with the internet and the AWS infrastructure. Click save, that's all good. We need to do a couple more things here, but those things are actually going to be in the EC2. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here to services, click on services, come over to EC2 that's under compute, we need two things out of the EC2 dashboard. The first is a placement group. The second is a key pair. So on the left, come down here to placement groups. What placement groups do is they physically locate as close as possible instances so that it reduces the network latency between them. And that's very important in a multi-server architecture like Teradata Vantage. So let's go ahead and create one. We'll click create placement group. We have to give it a name. So again, we'll follow our pattern, how to series dash PG. And this is kind of recent, it's a strategy. The original placement group was always a cluster. We wanted our instances to be very close, but AWS introduced a spread placement group where you actually spread them as far apart as possible for redundancy. We definitely want a cluster, go ahead and select cluster, click create. We've got a placement group. Last thing we need, now is a key pair and a key pair is a way to authenticate and log into the instances without using a password. So let's go ahead and click on key pair here. We'll click on create, need to give it a name. So we'll call it how to series dash KP one, just in case we ever need to create some more, click create. Once that's done, it's now gonna give you the option to download the private key. Absolutely take advantage of this option. It's the only time you'll ever get it. This is what you need to log in. We'll go ahead and click save on there. We now have our placement groups and our key pair. Now, before we go any further, it's important to note that Teradata Advantage may need more resources than the default limits for your AWS account. You can check to see what your limits are by staying in the EC2 dashboard and coming up here to limits. And then we'll see all the limits listed. Uh, it starts out with the instances. So say for instance, we can look here at the c4.large instances. Uh, in this case, this account has a limit of 20, so I could run 20 C4 large instances. If you scroll that down, that's gonna go through all of the instance types, and then it's gonna come down through host limits, EBS limits, and then finally networking limits. But what limits are you likely to run into? Well, in that case, let's go look at the documentation for Teradata Vantage for AWS. So I'm gonna go here to this other browser tab. I'm gonna go to our documentation site, that's docs, D-O-C-S, .teradata.com. And down here on the right is cloud and look for Teradata software for AWS. Go ahead and click that. And that's gonna bring up all the documentation for all versions of Teradata Vantage for AWS. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna come down here to the release number. I'm gonna click more so I can see all the versions. I'm gonna find the highest version. Once I do that, now I can go ahead. I'm gonna look in the installation and administration guide. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. That's gonna bring that up. On the left under topics, there's one called before deploy. Click that to expand it. And you're gonna see down here, AWS service limits. And there's a lot of discussion on that, but really the three that you're probably gonna run into limits are, it's gonna be the EBS storage, the number of EC2 instances, if you were say provisioning a fairly large site, and then IP addresses, the elastic IP addresses, in case you were doing those static ones. Those are probably the limits that you'll hit. So go check the limits that you have back in your account, see if you need to go ahead and request them. Uh, depending what type of support you have with AWS, those account limits might be increased in a couple of hours or in a couple of days. At this point, your AWS account is now prepared. Once you have prepared your AWS environment, 
you are ready for the next episode in this series, Launching Teradata Vantage. If you have any questions, please let us know. Otherwise, feel free to go on to the next episode.